Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about a game engine that I've been a big fan of since day one, and that is the Flax engine. Now this one, it just released Flax version 1.11. Uh, you can see the engine showcase running in the background. You get an idea of what this engine is used for and what it is capable of. The best way to probably describe Flax is this is an indie Unreal Engine. So it's a lot like Unreal Engine in that you can program using C++. Uh, there's also a Blueprint style programming language available there as well. Uh, it is cross-platform and it is source available. Now also like Unreal Engine, it is not open source, it is source available and it is a commercial game engine but you only have to pay for it after you make a certain threshold of money. Now the part that's most impressive about Flax is this is mostly one developer's work and what he's managed to accomplish is somewhat staggering in my humble opinion. It's definitely, if you are kind of struggling to figure out which engine is right for you, Flax might be definitely be worth a look, especially again because you can script using C++, but you can also script using C Sharp or their visual programming language. And it is a very uh, graphic oriented, feature rich. You've got animation editors, terrain editing tools, etc. There is a ton in Flax. So what we're going to do now is take a quick look at Flax in action, and then we'll get back to what is actually new in Flax uh, 1.11. So here we are in the Flax engine launcher. I'm just going to go ahead and load up a sample project. This is for particle systems. The reason why I went with particle systems for the demo is there's actually quite a few improvements in uh, 1.11 around particle systems and the graphics, debugging, and profiling, and that kind of stuff. So you get an idea. This is what the editor looks like. Your composition looks like this. It's kind of a combo of the hierarchies of Godot and then a component-based system here. So you can add new scripts, add new components to objects and build them over here. Um, number of different editors built in there as well. You can see it here. You can preview your live game in action right here, debug it directly inside of this editor. But you can also open up your project over in Visual Studio and do your work over there. So you can open this thing up in another editor if you wish to do so. Uh, it is nice. I, I, I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail about Flax itself. If you're looking for like a getting started guide, check out my Flax for Unity developers tutorial. That actually kind of shows you uh, getting started, programming, setting up uh, a uh, animation, the animation tools, etc. Uh, so do check that one out for a little bit more details. But here we can see one of the new areas that they've done. One of the neat new things they did, a little improvement. But you'll notice these little uh, icons or things in the world like these uh, clouds and so on. They now scale. So it used to be like as you got really far away, they got get really, really tiny. Now they don't. So now you can actually keep seeing them at distance. It makes it a lot easier to see what's going on in your scene. We also had, again, a lot of improvements in the particle systems. So here, for example, is a particle system right there. So particle being generated there, spitting them out. This is a system two. So let's go open up system two. You can see the tools that are available here. So here is um, the particle system in action. By the way, everything is dockable and customizable. You can put anything anywhere in your world to go ahead and check that one out. Now this is actually using this emitter. So this emitter over here is emitter two as well. So let's go ahead and open up emitter two and you can see some of the changes. So we've got here, there is uh, this node-based system. You can use this for programming, but you also use it for a number of other things like animations, creating particle systems, materials, etc. It's gotten some love in the uh, 1.11 release as well. So now you've got new features such as this. So you can now, oops, uh, grab things uh, and, hmm, okay, I need to figure this one out. Okay, I got to click directly over the node. So here I'll select all of the nodes here, and you now have these new tools such as here for reformatting. So you can format how things align, distribute them around, distribute them uh, evenly in your tool like this. Very nice for working with these graph nodes. And these graph nodes are used kind of all the way throughout Flax. We've also got some new debugging tools, etc. We'll get over to that. Let's head on over to the website side of things now. Uh, and boom. All right, here we go. So Flax is here. If you want to check out Flax, it is available at flaxengine.com. Uh, as I mentioned, the source code is available, uh, but it is not open source. At the same time, let's go over here, check out the features, you get an idea of what it's capable of. We looked a little bit of the feature showcase. If you want to see more, do watch that entire video. But some of the key things, C Sharp and C++ scripting, a lot of things around rendering. It is cross-platform, so Windows, Linux, Android, Mac OS, iOS, PS4, PS5, Switch, and Xbox. More importantly, 
importantly, the editor itself runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, uh, which is somewhat rare. Um, we've got real-time global illumination, a bunch of VFX tools, support for large worlds. So you've got 64-bit coordinates there. So if you want to create universe scale, you can do that there. Again, hot reloading is also available. So if you're scripting with C++, you can actually make changes on the fly. I never trust it, to be honest. And that's not on Flax. That's on anything that uses hot reload. But that functionality is available. you got a bunch of tools for role generation, things like train editors, foliage, fogs, LODs, and so on. Uh, level streaming is in there. Cloth simulations, behavior trees, you name it. There is a ton of functionality in there. There is the uh, breakdown for pricing, by the way. So it's a 4% royalty after you make $250,000 per quarter. So you can make up to a million dollars a year without paying a cent. So for the mass, vast majority of people, you're never going to pay anything to use Flax. So it's available. Download for Linux, Mac, or Windows. There are a number of samples available as well. Uh, and I also did, again, that tutorial. If you're coming from a Unity perspective or you just want to see a getting started guide to Flax, I'd recommend checking that one out. So now back to 1.11 release specifically. Uh, so what is here? Well, we've got a couple of new games made with uh, Flax, which was part of what I used in my thumbnail. So it's nice to see Flax starting to get used to create some games. Uh, that's one of those big things. You need some ship titles to prove what you can do. So we've got a couple of games being developed with Flax, which is good to see. But this one's a big one. So you've got the ability to do custom shading models. Um, so you do lighting calculations without any need to modify the engine. This allows you to do stylized games or um, different uh, shader methods without having to change the, the built-in render pipelines or anything like there. So you can see an example of it here. This is to create a shell uh, cell shading setup. So you get an idea of the process, how to write the code to do it, um, and so on. So it's pretty simple. Like that, that was it to add sh cell shading to your game. So this new functionality is going to open it up to a number of different uh, rendering options, which is pretty cool. Uh, we got new decal or decal layers there. Uh, so if you want to do things like bullets, etc., on top of surfaces, you could do them with uh, decals. Uh, again, new memory profiler. So you can see uh, this is low level memory tracking. So you can see how any memory is being used by your engine, helps you debug and figure out what the heck is going on. Uh, it comes in very handy when porting games to platforms with limited memory capabilities such as mobile or handheld consoles. Uh, again, we got a, quite a few improvements on the GPU side of things. It's another game uh, being created for Flax that's running on the Nintendo Switch, by the way, which is good to hear. Uh, so if you use particles on 1.11, it should run a lot faster. Uh, so both rendering and simulation have been refactored to scale better across different hardware. GPU particles sorting uh, run parallel and very fast path for small emitters. And GPU execution has been improved by using UAV overlaps and more optimized memory barriers. Another thing that we've got here is particle emitter debug drawing there. So you can now debug shapes for set position module. Hide this by checking that feature off there. Uh, so for more advanced effects, new layout tab in particle emitter editor uh, displays layout and memory information of the particles over there. We also now have GPU profiling in Tracy. Uh, this is for Direct3D 11, 12, and Vulkan APIs being supported. Again, should give you good insight into uh, where the performance of your game, like if you're having a performance issue or whatever, this will kind of jump into those three major rendering uh, engines. So it should help you get through that. That. As I said, their uh, graph system, which is called VizJack, uh, got a number of improvements. First off, we got all that formatting stuff we saw in action there. Uh, so and it uses many areas of the engine from materials to particle systems. In 1.11, a lot of new features were added, and a lot of existing ones were improved. So we've got additive and subtractive box select, uh, new node formatting and alignment options, uh, node socket connections can be moved using a mouse drag, and time nodes now contain both scaled and unscaled time values. As I mentioned earlier, the icon viewport icon scaling, so it, it's based off of their size from the camera, makes it a lot easier to find them when they're far away. Bunch of new keyboard shortcuts here as well. Uh, so those are in there, async scene loading. Um, so this should configure to use a max of 30% of the total frame time. So uh, smooths the loading of large levels and parts of code that are running async now. Uh, on top of that, we also have the layers matrix highlighting. So um, added the uh, highlights to the row and columns of the checkbox that the mouse is currently hovering over. Uh, then we've got threading improvements. These are core to the engine itself, which is obviously quite nice. Uh, improved many parts of the engine to use multi-threading more often, especially physics simulations, result processing, content streaming, and particles, and much more. In the sample, falling boxes, the lowest FPS accounted. Uh, all 10,000 boxes collided, went up from an average of 47 to 75 frames per second. So not quite a doubling, but a little bit more than a 50% increase in performance. Uh, and it should work better. Engines 
improvement skills better in large projects. So we've got uh, multi-threading improvements in there as well. The ability to see GPU textures. So this is textures you're dynamically creating. You can see a preview of them in action. Uh, you've got the ability to check multiple resolutions in your UI editor preview. So you can see it there. You can also define your own, I believe. Uh, you can see prefab differences. Uh, now shows added and removed actors. And we got some more details when it comes to wheeled vehicles. So speaking of more details, if you want, jump into the release notes. You got breakdown of all of the fixes. So you see here, there's a ton of fixes, et cetera, here as well uh, that have been added or um, changed or whatever in this particular release. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Flax, uh, Flax 1.2. 11 is now available. It is a very cool engine. I highly recommend you go ahead and check it out. It, it is, um, it, it's a kind of a David versus Goliath story, and David is doing a very, very good job in this scenario. So ladies and gentlemen, Flax 1.11. Have you ever checked out Flax before? Are you going to? Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.